OK. So even though, yes, I did just realize that you guys could do this by factoring by grouping, um, I want to show this to you guys. Oh, it's my computer. It's OK. So what would happen? Let's say I want to find all the zeros. And let's pretend, actually, we could not factor this by grouping. One thing we need to do is find what are the zeros, right? Because if you remember, if we know what one zero is, we can do synthetic division, correct? So all we got to do is start and find one zero. The best way to do that is to graph it and to find that zero. Graph it, use calculate, find out where the graph crosses. However, if you're on a test and you don't know what it is, there's a couple of rules that we have to help you out. The first rule is the rational zero test. And what the rational zero test is, there is a list of possible rational zeros is in the form of the factors of p over q. So if I was going to use my rational zero test, I'm just going to do plus or minus the factors of p over q. That's going to give me all the possible rational zeros. Make sure I'm not including irrational or imaginary zeros, only rational zeros. Rational zeros are numbers, and numbers you can write as fractions. So what are the factors of 9? Forget about the negative. It's 9, 3, and 1. What are the factors of q, which is my coefficient of 1? Just 1. So therefore, the possible rational zeros, the possible zeros, like the 1s, the 2s, the 1 halves, are plus or minus 9 over 1, which is just 9, plus or minus 3 over 1, which is just 3, and plus or minus 1 over 1, which is just 1. OK? So if I was going to have to, if, one of, if I was going to graph this and I have a rational 0, one of these has to be that number. Now, there's two different ways you guys can test if the 0 works or not, if you don't have a graphing calculator. The first way is to use the factor or remainder theorem. Can you guys just plug in f of 1? Right? What happens if I get if this equals 0? What does that tell you about 1? It's a 0. Then you can use synthetic division, right? If, if it doesn't, then that's a remainder. So let's go and simplify this. That's 1 plus 3 minus 3 minus 9. Right? Doesn't work. Could you guys also do that with negative 1? Yes. Or you could also just test negative 1 and use synthetic division. See if it has a remainder. Some of you guys might really like synthetic division. So you might say, you know what? I just like doing synthetic division. It's much easier than doing what you just did. So you bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is negative 1. 2, negative 2, negative 5, positive 5, negative 4. Again, negative 1 doesn't work. I have a remainder of 4, right? And if for whichever of you guys put negative 4 in for there, that doesn't work. So guess what? I just wasted, what, 30 seconds, a minute? Are you still writing that down? OK. Now, 3 might not be as fun. Plus um, 3 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 9. So for 1, it's not bad to evaluate. But you guys can see this stuff kind of gets a little bit crazy, right? I mean, it's not that bad. 27 plus 27 minus 9 minus 9. Well, you guys can see that, obviously, it does not work again, right? Yes? It is, or it equals 0, but, or it equals 36. But you want it to equal 0, correct? Well, I did cheat, because I'm not going to do problems that I know I don't want you guys to do. So I did do problems, and I did figure out that my one rational 0 is negative 3. So let me prove it to you. So let's do negative 3. Well, negative 3 would have been the next one, right? I still did all the work I would expect you guys to do. I did 1, negative 1. Always start with the smaller numbers. 1, negative 1. So you want us to go through all the numbers? If you don't have a graphing calculator, find which one works. Yep. You always start with the smaller ones, then get to bigger. Then do fractions you know, after that. So let's do this. 1, 3, negative 3, negative 9. Again, the process of synthetic division. Bring down the 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 0 times negative 3 is 0. Negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. 
So therefore, is x minus 3 a 0? Yes. Remainder, x to the 0, x to the first, x squared. So my factor is x squared minus 3. Yes? OK, so not my factor, but that's also my quotient. If that's my 0, what's my factor? x plus 3. So you guys could say that, in reality, f of x is equal to x plus 3 times x squared minus 3. Yes? This times that, this times that gives you your polynomial. Now, do we know how to factor when it's in factored form? Yeah, you just set, replace that with 0, and you say x plus 3 equals 0, and x squared minus 3 equals 0. Notice how the multiplicity of both of these is 1. Right? Don't use that multiplicity. So then I subtract. x equals negative 3. Over here, I add 3. x squared equals 3. Take the square root. Take the square root. Please remember, whenever you introduce the square root, you have to take plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Therefore, our 0 set is negative 3, negative square root of 3, positive square root of 3. OK? Anybody have any questions on that?